We talked about projections a little bit when we were looking at grid coordinate systems. We talked about the Mercator projection, the Trans Mercator, and the Conic projection, and uh, and they were a little out of order. But sometimes this stuff, there's a lot of pieces that don't always fit in a linear sequence. So I'm going to talk uh, a little more detail about the concept of projections. And as you probably know, of all of the uh, types of maps, a globe provides the most accurate representation because it more closely reproduces the shape of the Earth. Not exactly, because they tend to make globes pretty spherical, and we know the Earth is an, is an obloid, uh, oblate spheroid, spheroid, or a geode. However, even the largest globe has a lot, has a very small scale and shows relatively little detail. So even though they're the most accurate representation, they can't be very useful or very accurate. If you think about a globe that's say two feet in diameter, it has a scale reduction of one to 20 million. Um, a globe with a diameter of about 1800 feet, so that'd be the width of six football fields would need to be reduced one to 24,000 and that's the size of the topo maps we're using. So you can see to get a globe that has the amount of detail as a topographic map, it would have to be bigger than the diameter of six football fields. So they, they have a very limited usage. Uh, the other thing is they're very expensive to reproduce and update and so if you, if you look at globes, uh, you ha if with the creation of Sudan, you have to create a whole new globe. You don't, you can't just create a new, uh, a new um, page, map page to, to represent South Sudan. They're difficult to carry around. They're hard to use for uh, camping or trail uh, mapping and they're kind of difficult to store. So the next alternative is to take that spherical representation and use what's called a projection to portray all or part of the Earth on a flat surface. And if you can think about, uh, I think the, the reading you have shows this illumination of a light bulb inside a sphere and the shadow that it would create or reproduce on a flat sided uh, surface around that sphere would be a projection. Now this cannot be done without some kind of distortion. That, that projection then is a mathematical transformation of latitude and longitude that are based on a specific datum and ellipsoid and so our datums and ellipsoids have changed over time as our measuring abilities have gotten better. But based on that control system and what portion of the Earth you want to create, the latitude and longitude lines are adjusted to make the best representation possible. So we were looking at maps that we called uh, not projected. We were looking at the the U.S. We were talking and uh, looking at core pleth maps and thematic maps and and showing how stretched out uh, North America looked, especially the United States, and that that's not the real shape of the country, or, and that's based on the the lines of latitude and longitude being drawn as a regular rectangular grid. And what we know is that lines of longitude converge at the poles and so these distances are stretched out. They're not accurate. And so when you look at a map that has not been projected, so that's just shown in geographic coordinates, the scale of the map, the distance between places, the shape of the countries, the area, all of these are distorted. and the distortion increases as you get toward the poles. So along the equator, this is probably the most accurate representation on an unprojected uh, map of the world. So the, dis the distortions in shape, area, distance, direction can be 
can be addressed with specific projections that maintain or protect that aspect. So a conformal projection is a projection that pr preserves the shape. Um, and it's best used in smaller regions. An equidistance projection preserves the distance, uh, but the area would be cons be distorted, but it would give you a correct distance between places. An asmuthal projection would preserve directions, preserve global global angles, and an equidis equal, uh, equivalent projection would preserve the size or the area. And some then projections minimize one of these aspects but would maximize the other. And then there are projections that try to attempt um, maintaining a little bit of everything but distorting a little bit of everything as well. There are three basic families of maps or mapping planes that are used in, uh, in projections. And so the three families are conic, cylindrical or planar, which is the asmuthal. And so we can look at the way these three different families or mapping planes would show if you uh, used a, a paper transparency. So the, the black transparent approximates a piece of paper and how that map would be drawn or, or what area would be covered on that piece of paper. So an asmuthal projection is a flat piece of paper laid on the surface and just this area that could be seen from that uh, perspective would be mapped. A conic projection would be a cone and just if you were doing a conic projection of the world just this maybe western hemisphere and the northern hemisphere would be mapped and a cylindrical projection if I'm looking at it this way um, would show either the whole earth or just that that sec that hemisphere and so if we look at them then um, spread out on on the two-dimensional surface this is the way um, the three different families of maps would look based on their mapping plane. We'll go back one. Um, we're looking at as far as this is would be an asmuthal projection and if you can imagine taking a piece of paper and laying it against the surface of the earth or a globe and the point where the paper actually touches the surface would be the tangent point and that point would have the least distortion because think about if you used an ink pad and inked the surface of the globe where you touch it it's going to give you a pretty good representation. But as you move away from that point of contact, so here you see the point of contact at these yellow lines being a lot farther, there's going to need to be some kind of stretching, distortion, um, or changing shape in order to get that portion of the surface reproduced on that flat piece of paper. So the surface that is closest to the point of contact is the most accurate part of the map. And that can be done in two ways. One is called a tangent point or tangent line. And so here you see an asmuthal, so we're looking at uh, the edge of the piece of paper, lying against the surface and right here where those two come in contact would be the most accurate as I move away, the rep representation on these edges would be the least accurate or the most distorted. You can also have a line of, ta of tangency. So here is a cylindrical map family where the piece of paper was folded around the earth or the globe at the equator. And so that equator line is the line of tangency. Everything around 
or on this line is accurate and as you move away from this line you get more and more distortion and this is the classic example of the Mercator projection that in the northern hemisphere in order to project those areas they had to be enlarged and distorted in a huge amount. A second point of contact is when the paper is secant uh, to the surface and that means there are two points or two lines of tangency. This is a little hard to visualize but if you could slide that piece of paper through the surface of the earth and come out the other side of a, of a small section of the of the earth you would have two points where that line actually is in contact with the surface that it's mapping and so the areas on either side of that point here would be more accurate and the areas on either side of that would be more accurate and as you move away from that point those two points you would have more distortion. With a conic projection the secant line runs through the globe and there are two parallels that create lines of tangency and again with these two parallels you have accuracy on that line and near that line and on this line and near that line and as you move north and south of these you you have more distortion. So here's probably a little better image of a cylindrical uh, tangent and a cylindrical secant where you would have two lines uh, of tangency here and an example of a conic projection where it only touches on one latitude and a conic which kind of uh, goes through the surface and there are two parallels or two lines of did I say longitude on this I meant latitude one line of latitude on the tangent and two lines of latitude on the secant that add accuracy. So let's look at some specifics. The Mercator projection we looked at that video and um, they talked about why the Peters projection was socially more accurate. That's a great exam question. Uh, and so here's the Mercator projection and you can see that uh, the lines of latitude get farther and farther apart as you go from the equator north and south and the lines of longitude do not merge and so you've got huge um, size discrepancy where Africa and Greenland look like the same size but they're not at all. So they have straight meridians or longitude and straight parallels that always intersect at right angles which is not the true latitude and longitude of a spherical um, form. So uh, this map type is used for navigation, marine navigation, because um, all of the lines are in a constant direction. And then it's also used in the, the, the state plane system in state uh, zones that are north-south trending. So you can see that if I have a, a central meridian, um, I would need to use uh, a UTM uh, map for that. If I wanted to use, oh, sorry, uh, if I wanted to, because Africa, let me try this again, because Africa is taller north, south, and east, west, a transverse mercator would work well here where the paper is light, is transverse or perpendicular and the line of tangency would be in the center of the continent that would work well too for ice for Greenland and for South America. The Robinson projection is called a pseudo cylindrical projection where it's kind of a cylinder but there's been an approximation of the lines of longitude uh, converging at both the pole 
both of the poles. And it's not really a mathematical formula. It distorts the scale. It distorts the distance, the shape. But it has, it's, the goal is try to balance out some of those distortions. And so this is a very common, uh, um, map projection that's used in thematic maps and world maps. And it just kind of gives a better perspective than, than the Mercator map. And maybe, uh, has a little more social equity. The orthographic map is one that shows the Earth as if you were looking at it from space. It gives kind of a three-dimensional perspective to that. Uh, one of the negatives is you can only see a portion of the world at a time. And um, it gives you sort of a true perspective and, and shape. A conic projection uh, shows uh, that this is an example of a secant conic projection. So there are two lines of latitude that are used uh, to anchor or to control the distortion on this projection. This is a common projection used in U.S. topographic maps. Uh, it's used in the uh, state plane system where states are trending east-west. It's great for um, Canada, United States, which have a wider uh, east-west extent than they do a north-south extent. So that's a common one, a Lambert conformal conic. Another uh, conic projection that's used very commonly in the United States is an Albers equal area projection. And it distorts the scale and the distance, except right there along the, the two parallels. So this one has two standard parallels, 20 north and 60 north, which are uh, managing, so there's 20 and two, four, so this must be 60. Yeah, so these are the two parallels that are the secant lines or the lines of accuracy, and it's distorting uh, north and south of those. So I um, trace the outline of Oregon if it were in an unprojected coordinate system. So that's the red line here. And you can see this is a really common uh, shape that's used in Oregon, and it just makes me crazy when I see it. The true shape of Oregon, so this is a Lambert conformal conic projection. And I uh, added the outline layer of the unprojected Oregon, and you can see it's quite a bit uh, less um, width to it when you look at it in a, in a correct projection. So there are all these families of projections, uh, conic, uh, cylindrical, asmuthal projections. And within those families, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of types of projections. We'll look at a couple um, just because they're kind of fun. I'm going to pull this up. Let's see. So I've added arc. ArcGIS desktop. And this is the world if you use a continuous U.S. Albers projection. So that's the projection that's being used. And that projection makes the United States look great. It kind of messes pretty badly with uh, Australia. So I'm going to change to a geographic projection, which is an unprojected coordinate system, WGS84, which is just latitude and longitude. And you can take a look at, so that's what the world looks like if you don't project the data at all. And you can see that this projection is based on the WGS datum and the WGS 1984 spheroid. So this is a more modern uh, set of control points and shape 
shape of the earth and set set of control points. If we look at ooh, where is it? So here are the projections that were created just for Africa. So I'm going to look at this one. I have no idea what this is going to look like. Yes, yes, we want to change that. And that's an unprojected coordinate system that's based for Africa. It doesn't look much different to me than the other one. So let's go to some of the projected systems. So let's look at Africa. Um, Okay, so there's a projection of Africa using an equal area and part of that is because uh, part of the reasons they're using the Albers is because the standard parallels are at 20 degrees north latitude and 23 degrees south latitude. So here and here and that helps maintain the accuracy or the general uh, shape of the country. But so there are what four African uh, projections. There's a bunch of Asian projections. There's all these European. Let's look at. I don't know what this one is. Shall we look? Oh, now that did some bad stuff to Africa and South America, but it's intended to accurately map parts of Europe. And if we look at the properties for that projection, the accuracy is at the standard parallel 35 and 65, and the center of the projection is at 50 degrees longitude. So it's it's meant to be accurate. I don't know what is 50 degrees longitude. Let's take a look. Oh, pretty close. Dang, that's really good. So um, so that's 51 degrees longitude. So this is the center of that projection. That's where they intended it to be the most accurate. And what did I say? 65. So right about there for the latitude. And what is that? 27. I don't remember what I said. Let's take a look at that properties for that. Um, uh, 35 and 65. So let's turn off that thing. So 65, oh, so close, 67. So the latitude that they're using is about here. Nope, I am so wrong. That's because, yeah, hold on a sec. You know what they did? Hold on. So ArcGIS records their values as latitude, then longitude. No, they record their values as longitude, then latitude. Those bums. OK, so if I click here. This is the longitude value first. I hate that they do this. OK, so here is, OK, so there's the center of their, the origin of the map. That's 51 degrees east longitude. And the latitude there, 65 degrees north latitude. And what did I say, 35? Seriously. So you are welcome to laugh because I'm just about like, all right, hold on. I want to go to projections. 
65 and 35. Okay, so where is, I'm going to go here. Yeah, so there's the other parallel. So at about 35 degrees north latitude, about 65 degrees north latitude, and then the cent center of that projection is here. So all of that to say, um, projections have an ellipsoid that they're based on. They have a coordinate system that they're based on. So this one is using um, the datum is the DETR's datum, and that's spheroid. So this was created by geodeticists in Europe. So they have their own shape, size, and model that's used, and their own set of coordinate systems. And then it has the center of the, the latitude of origin, the center central meridian, which is 10, and then the north latitude and the parallel. Way more than you need to know about about maps, and I probably shouldn't even have done that demo because it was a bad demo. But anyway, um, leave it this suffice it to say there are hundreds and hundreds of types of projections in those families and all of them are based on a coordinate system a datum and a spheroid so here's really where I wanted to go so we can look at uh, Oregon and there's a projection called the North the, the North American datum 1927 which is based on the Clark spheroid of 1866. So that was that early model of the Earth. A lot of topographic maps are based on this uh, datum and spheroid. And then there's another one, an updated uh, same type of projection, same uh, transformation, but it's based on a different datum and a different spheroid. And this causes interesting alignments. So here is Oregon. Uh, the red line is, is the outline of the state from a map projection called uh, the Continuous Albers NAD 1927. Here's Oregon from Continuous Albers 1983. You don't notice too much difference in those two. But I put a red dot on a car at a bridge in Florence in the NAD 1927. And then I change the projection to NAD 1983, and you can see that that dot no longer aligns with the same place. And so you can get misalignments in data because of different projections or even just different datums. So here's an example of a datum shift in Arizona where this is the same latitude and longitude one spot is from the older datum, NAD 1927. The other's from the newer datum, 1983. So it's really important when you're working with your maps and your, your data to know what projection you're working in and to know if it's projected or not projected. The other thing about, let's go back here, the projections, that is important and you will need this later more than you need this now is when I'm looking I'm going to close this and this so I've opened up ArcMap and I want to look at the geographic coordinate systems. so these are unprojected coordinate systems and WGS 84 when I look at the the units there is no linear measurement. The only measurement here is angular units. If I look at a projected coordinate system, so let's look at the world WGS 83. Oh, there's so many projections. Which one do I want? Let's look at the Mercator projection. And you can see that the linear unit is in meters. So that if I try to do accurate measurement and analysis in data that is unprojected, 
I will have a lot of difficulties and have very inaccurate maps. So whenever I do any analysis, I need my data to be in a projected coordinate systems, in a coordinate system. Now, for the most part, when people collect and capture data in a GPS unit, they'll do it as raw latitude and longitude in unprojected coordinate system so that it can now be transformed into whatever people need. So I always collect in WGS 84, but that's going to depend on who you're working for. So if you're in the military, my guess is they use UTM. Uh, when they collect data, they set their GPS units to UTM. One of the assignments uh, the, or the lab for your uh, projection so will be looking at three different projections, the Lambert conformal conic, the Mercator, and it might be the Robinson. I don't remember at this point, but you'll see that in the lab. And what you're going to do is to describe the distortion, so either the shape or the size or the shape and the size, of what they've called ellipses or distortion circles. And what you need to know is that on these maps, every single one of those circles was the exact same size and same shape when it was created. And by changing the projection, you're going to change the size and the shape of those circles. And then you're going to discuss where are those circles distorted and how they're distorted.